Hi guys, sorry I've been away for so long, but I've just been traveling for the last three months and since coming back, I've been struggling with finding a place to live, as you do. So for now I've finally settled down, I thought I'd film a video for you and what better way to start off with than another favorites video. And I haven't done one of these in a long time, so it might be a little bit rusty. So I'm gonna film a November favorites. So in no particular order, my first favourite of the month is the NARS Audacious Lipsticks, which have had so much hype since they've been released. They come in, I'm not even going to pretend I know, uh, a kajillion colours, maybe about 30 colours. Um, it was a bit of a task to actually decide on which colour I wanted to buy. And the colour I actually settled for was the shade Audrey, which is a kind of brown toned warm pink i would say the only shade i could compare this to in my collection is the shade mac twig which is kind of like a brown toned pink um, this one's a bit more rosier the finish of these are i wouldn't say a complete matte it's more of like a satin matte um, but the pigmentation is absolutely brilliant, so you get that much payoff in one swipe. It goes on without any drag and it wears really comfortably on the lips without drying. And I really like this shade because it's one of those shades that you can put on when you don't know what lipstick to wear. And this will pretty much go with any colour eyeshadow. My second favourite of the month is actually, well, two products two brushes from I think the NYX Picks Real Techniques collection. I really like the cheek brush because it's very dense so it does pick up a lot of products so you really have to tap off the excess. It is just so so soft, the softest brush I think I own and um, it's right, the right size because I've got fairly big cheeks so it goes on really nicely. And the other favourite of mine is the Duo Fibre Face Brush. Um, I don't really have a Duo Fibre brush in my collection um, and this is perfect for products where you don't want to pick up too much. And I actually have been using this for the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder which is another favourite of the month. And in the past, I've really struggled with this product because, if I can open it, because I found that using other brushes with this, that it can apply quite unevenly on the face and it ends up looking like a patchy, muddy mess on my cheeks, which is not a look I'm going for. So I've kind of forgotten about this product and it's just ended in the back of my makeup stash and because I've just moved into my new flat I've had the time to go through and sort out my makeup stash and kind of rediscover products that have been long forgotten and this was one of them and I use this with this and it's like the ultimate dream team this picks up just enough products even though I do have to tap off the excess as well because you don't want to get too much of this on your face because it just ends up looking like a muddy mess um, so I pick up the product using this, tap off the excess and just apply it along my uh, cheekbone or rather in the hollows of my cheek and because it's that kind of, uh, it's got a grey tone to it rather than an orange tone as you normally get with contour powders, it actually mimics the way the shadow looks and it really does give you cheekbones and boy do I need help in the cheekbone department so I've been applying this in the hollows of my cheek but if I want to add extra warmth I'll go and apply bronzer kind of on top and then just taking it up the hairline and uh, across the forehead and along my jawline I'm really glad that I've rediscovered this and I can actually use it properly um, as opposed to thinking it was just a waste of money before because I thought it didn't work on me, but it does. It just depends on the right tools. So the next favourite has got to be the best favourite of the month, if that makes sense to you. But it's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush Palette, which comes in a luxuriously gold package. Um, doesn't look so luxurious with all the finger marks on it, so apologies for that. If you open it up, it reveals three of their ambient lighting blushes and uh, a lovely handy mirror to go with it. And 
not having tried any of the ambient lighting blushes or in fact the ambient lighting powder i was really excited when i saw the release of this um, mainly because i thought that the individual blushes can be quite steep because i think they're around about probably nearly 40 pounds but this compact is around 56 pounds which is still expensive but for what you're getting i think it's totally worth it the reason why i was quite hesitant in trying the blushes in the first place or previously is because whenever i've swatched them in store i've always found that they come off quite chalky um and i just couldn't really tell if it's going to sit nicely on the face but you know it's just had so many rave reviews that i just completely caved and i just saw how beautiful this palette looked and i thought i had to have it um and i'm so glad that i bought it my favorite shade is probably um mood exposure which is this dark kind of plummy brown one which looks a bit odd as a cheek color but actually gives off a really natural hint of color to the cheeks and i normally choose this color as my go-to everyday color if i want my cheeks to be a bit more perkier i usually go for this color which is kind of a more cool toned pink compared to the middle shade. The middle shade is probably my least favourite because it's quite it's quite light and peachy and I don't think it works well on my skin tone as these two colours. So yes, my favourite, favourite of the month. The next favourite of mine is actually a product I picked up when I was abroad travelling and I actually went, whoops, oops. And I actually went into the body shop to buy, I think it might have been some eye, rate, eye makeup remover. And I got totally sold by the sales assistant when I went to pay for the product. And she was telling me about this new all-in-one, uh, it's called Instablur Eye, which kind of I kind of assumed was some sort of uh, primer or concealer. Oh, it's, it's a, it is both, yeah. But Insta Blur, I kind of thought it was a bit of a primer. I'd not seen this product or not heard anyone review this product, so I thought it'd be interesting to try. And it's just one of those impulse purchases where you're just glad that you actually picked it up. A lot of the times with impulse purchases, I end up regretting it or having to take it back. Um, but this is well worth it. It's got a really weird consistency. It reminds me of souffle for some reason. Um, and when you touch it, it actually feels like a mousse. It's really, really light and airy. It's a fleshy shade. And you apply it over the lids and also under the under eye area. And what it does is it blurs out any kind of darkness, but also kind of fills in the fine lines you might have there so it provides a nice smooth even surface for you to apply eyeshadow on top and also for if you're applying concealer under the eye area um, so I was really impressed I really didn't think much of it when I picked it up but I'm really glad I did so most days or more often than not I usually use this as a primer but also as a concealer prepper if you can call it that well it goes on before concealer so my next favorite of the month is the maybelline color drama intense velvet lip crayon i've seen a lot of bloggers and youtubers review this whilst i was away the first thing i did was head to boots or was it super drug and i picked up i think it was a free for two promotions which seems to be running every other week and I decided to pick up this pink colour, which is called, um, doesn't say, I'm sure it says it somewhere. I think it's Keep It Classy or something like that, but it's a, it's a mid-tone, actually, yeah, it's a mid-toned, fairly warm pink and it's quite similar actually to the NARS Audacious lipstick in Audrey except that's a bit darker and it applies matte but the formulation is so creamy that it's non-drying which is quite unusual for a matte because automatically you would assume that a matte lipstick 
would be really drying, uncomfortable on the lips, um, but this is nothing like it at all. And on most days, I've been wearing this on my lips as a kind of, kind of my lips, but better, but a little bit more pink. Um, and sometimes I add a little bit of pink gloss on top just to add a little bit of shine. But yeah, I'm really liking this. The next favorite is also another product that I rediscovered in the back of my makeup stash. And it is the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer. And I'm in the shade S4. This is just a brilliant concealer. If you've got any big pimples that you're really struggling to conceal with a, a liquid concealer, then you need this in your life. It's it's quite a thick consistency. It warms and loosens up and it becomes a bit more fluid and easier to work with when you work it on the back of your hand. And I like the fact that it comes in two shades. So you've got obviously the darker one to cater for when your skin's maybe a bit more tanned and then the lighter one when you know you're in the middle of winter and you're as pale as a ghost and right now I'm kind of probably losing my tan a little bit now so I'm using more of the lighter shade but what I do is uh, take a small brush dip it in each color and then just mix it and warm it up on the back of my hand so it loosens the formula a little bit and then I just apply it onto you know the spot the blemish whatever and um, yeah and then I just put a bit of powder on it to set it and basically it doesn't budge and because it's not a liquid formula it doesn't tend to smudge as easily um, or wear off as quick but yeah this is going to be at the top of my stash from now on and my last favorite of the month is Maybelline's color tattoo 24 hour leather effect this is the new line that Maybelline has brought out it is an absolute dupe for max paint pot in groundwork down to the formulation the color is quite a close match but the formulation is really really creamy and The finish is really matte as opposed to the regular 24 hour tattoo which I think has a bit more of a metallic finish and it applies really easily. I know there have been reviews where bloggers have mentioned that it doesn't apply consistently but I've not had that problem with this. I think it applies really smoothly, really nice and it's one of those products where you know you don't really know what to put in your eyes but you kind of want something on your eyes and you just want to slap this on because it it just adds that little bit more kind of depth to your eyes it's just a little bit darker than my skin tone so it looks like I've made an effort without making too much effort if you know what I mean um, but yeah I really like it so well done I just hope that maybe they've got other shades in this one I think there is a plummy shade um, not really my cup of tea I think but maybe like a darker brown or I don't know but yeah be interested to see if there's any other colors in this and that's all for my monthly favorites thank you for tuning in and taking the time to watch this video and I shall see you soon bye